Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Lee. You will not find any videos of myself during these lectures. Why? Because it is not about me, but the focus should be on the gospel. We hope that you had a good week, and I hope you are wearing your mask and social distancing during this crisis. Once again, we thank you for tuning in to the Pastor.Faith YouTube channel. We are bringing you messages using the manuscripts which were the original writings and interpretation into the King James Bible. This will give each and every one of us a clear view and understanding of the Bible which was created with the wisdom of God to teach with clarity and understanding, not to confuse. As we look at the book of James chapter one, verse five through six, it teaches us if any lack wisdom, let him ask of the Lord who giveth to all men and women freely. So go with us now into another lecture where some are recorded live and some come directly from the desk of the pastor. Come follow us with your Bibles as we follow Christ. Passover demanded faith. And it, and it just didn't happen. And it's just not something that you overlook and think that oh well whatever because as we read through the passages you're going to find out it took faith number one to be delivered number two to trust Moses number three to stay on course with what God told Moses to do in response to what Pharaoh was trying not to let them do and there, there is a great celebration about Passover every year, which is great. But this Passover here that we're going to talk about today leads into the final Passover, which was the Lamb of God that was given for us. Perfect sacrifice. And as you notice as we go through this, you're going to find out that God's Lamb, Jesus Christ, had to be blemishless. He had to follow the rules and the regulations that have been prophesied since the beginning so that he fit the perfect sacrifice for the sins of the world. Everyone say the sins of the world. Now, Passover is a celebration of Jewish, of the Jewish festival celebrating uh, what God had done by bringing them out of Egypt. And as I said before, boy, you can get, I can get started in this and really just go, 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 go. But many people probably wonder, how did they get in bondage? And that is a story that I don't think is even uh, taught very often. And if you remember Joseph, Jacob's son, who his brothers did not like, and they threw him in a pit one day while they were out walking. They actually created the pit and threw him in there because he was liked of his father, he just had the anointing of God on him. You ever meet somebody that can walk into a room and, and the presence, you can just feel the presence of God there? He had it. And God began to speak to him through dreams, through prophecies. And uh, his father loved him so much, he made a special coat for him with many, many different colors. And the brothers hated him, hated him. So they got together and figured out a way that they could trap him, and uh, they did. And then they sold him 
to a, a slave owner. And as years went by, there came a famine in the land. And as the famine was coming in the land, uh, the master who, who brought Joseph threw him in prison and everything Joseph touched, God blessed, God anointed, everything. And the, the, the people that were in prison even saw that. They saw that he was just above and beyond. And some of them had dreams and they asked him to interpret them and he interpreted them. And it came to pass just like he interpreted them. Some he interpreted it with, with good intentions. Some of them were in bad intentions for that individual. But he was exalted and lifted up by the grace of God so much that the Pharaoh then of Egypt brought him in and exalted him as second in the kingdom. He had his ring, his seal. He can buy, sell, do anything he wanted to. And no one knew that Joseph was going to be the ones to save the Israelites. When the famine came, there was no food anywhere but in Egypt. And Joseph was over Egypt under the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh wanted to know how he could preserve his kingdom when the, the dream came about the famine that was coming. And God's anointing was on Joseph and Joseph told him he had a plan uh, how to put away because God was going to bring, well, I think it was seven years of, of, of good feasting and, and good growth, and then it'd be seven years of famine. And he asked Joseph, what, what, what can we do about it? And God touched Joseph, and Joseph developed a plan, and they, they put away all of their crops, saved them, and they had other countries come into them during the, the famine to buy from them. So, uh, Jacob's sons ran out of food where they were at. And it was a long journey to get to Egypt to get to buy food to survive. And they start making trips backwards and forth and backwards and forth. And when they came there, Joseph recognized them. That they were his brothers, but they didn't recognize him whatsoever. And he let them make trips after trips after trips after trips until finally he, he did some shenanigans. He took some, some, tro some gold trophies and stuff and hid it in their bags and then brought them in and blamed them from be for being a thief just to see how they would respond. And then he brought them to the table and sat down. And he never would look directly at them so they couldn't get a facial description of who he was. But then when they sat down at the table to feast, he revealed himself who he was. And they all were ashamed. They bowed and they repented for what they had did. But God used the evilness of evil men and, and the, the works of Satan to bring forth his blessing. And it was Joseph that told them, go back, bring our father, Jacob, and everyone to Egypt and tell them that Joseph lives. Tell him that Joseph lives because Joseph was Jacob's heart. And so they did. And what had happened was they came there and Joseph made them make a promise that when the day come, comes when I die and you leave Egypt, Take my bones with you. I don't want to be buried here in this land. So all of the family came over into Egypt. And the Pharaoh at that time said, bring your family, let them rejoice and enjoy the prosperities that we have. And they got content. Everyone say content. And they were not 
any longer there to prepare for or seek God for what God wanted, but they figured they'd live forever under Pharaoh's ruling. But the Bible says that Pharaoh died. And then there was a new Pharaoh that rose up. And when the new Pharaoh rose up, the blessings that he had or they had through uh, the original Pharaoh was no longer in existence. And they tried to plead with him about who they were, where they came from. And he says, I don't know this, this old Pharaoh. I don't know this Joseph you're talking about. You will be our slaves. And the Bible talks about that they were slaves for 430 years. Then they began, to, the Egyptians began to give them less to make more, less to make more, and they put bondage and bondage and bondage upon them. And as you know, Mo, you know the story about Moses. All of the, uh, the babies were supposed to be killed because he heard about someone was going to rise up and, and, and rescue the Israelites. And Moses' mother had faith, put, the, put Moses as a little baby, made a little canoe, and, and sent him down the river. And who was waiting at the other end? Pharaoh's daughter. And rescued him. Took him through the best schools, the best everything. Raised him up as being second on the throne. And Moses was very, very sensitive about what was going on with the Israelites. Very sensitive. Why? Why was he sensitive? Because he had their blood in him. Their genes was in him. He was an Israelite, which was kept from the Pharaoh at that time. And one day he was out in the field and he saw one of the Egyptians strike and kill one of the Israelites. So he retaliated and did the same thing back. And when he did it, all the Egyptian word got back to the Pharaoh and all the Egyptians went after Moses and Moses fled. Now, Moses at that time had no idea that God was going to use him as the leader to lead uh, the Israelites out of Egypt. No idea whatsoever. He went on with his life as normal. And when he ran into God, out in the desert, ran into God, these were years that have progressed. And the Bible categorizes it as the burning bush. And he turned and looked, what is this, he said. And he started walking toward it, and God said, no, don't come near me. Don't come near me. And then he began to talk to Moses about what he was going to call him to do. So Moses got a glimpse, a glimpse of, of one side of God. Because the Bible says no one has seen God and lived. He got one side of him. And Moses said, don't, I mean, God said, don't look on, at me on, or holy or on the other side because you will die. So Moses had a big task ahead of him now, knowing what his mission was. He knew, it, he knew about Egypt. He knew the Egyptians. He knew how the Pharaoh operated. He knew all of that. But he had one problem. And he told God, I'm not a man of speech. Boy, aren't we good at making excuses, huh? I can't talk. And God said, well, send, send your brother Aaron with you. Aaron will truly be your spokesman. And so the Israelites were in bondage and Moses began to plan, make his trips to try to talk to Pharaoh and get him to release the Israelites. And of course, Pharaoh did not want to do that. Why did he not want to do that? Was because... He was enjoying slavery. They were doing all the work. 
the Israelites, all the dirty work to make them money. And he did not want to see that go away whatsoever. So God had to implement a plan to be able to deliver those of his own, which were called the Israelites. Passover is a celebration of a Jewish festival celebrating that God brought them out. That is what's celebrated every day. Not real, I mean every year, I'm sorry. Not really sure the intent or the depth of their celebrations. But the celebration of the Passover should be God brought Israel out of bondage by the hand of Moses, remembering what can happen when obedience is exercised to God. And we sometimes, even ourselves, living in this day and time, we don't always want to be obedient to God. We don't always want to listen to God. We most of the time seek to have it our way. <clears throat> you would be thinking that we were going to McDonald's or Burger King through the drive through We want it our way. But that's not the way God operates. He has a set way, rules, regulations that need to be followed if we want to see the blessings. But the question is to you and I is on a daily basis, how deep are we searching and we're seeking God that we get it right? And you know what? A lot of us think, try to impress each other and say, well, I'm going to do this and do that. And then they'll see who I am and what I am. This is not the way it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be committed to the, the, the sincerity with sincerity to God. That he, we may get it right and that he may bless us. And others can see the blessings from what we have committed ourselves to do through, through God and being obedient to him. Now, as we look at, we're going to be reading from Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. We're going to be reading most of uh, that chapter, and we're, we'll probably, as I said before, have to resume to next week because there's a lot here. And I, I honestly believe uh, God is, is showing me the, how important it is that we understand what obedience is, and that there's a price that has to be paid for everything we ask God for. He just doesn't have a, a blessings in heaven where he, un, like a mailman, he unlocks the box and they come trickling down to us. Are we prepared for it? Are we prepared to go the mile? Verse 1, The Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for every house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, Set him and his neighbor next unto his house and take it accordingly to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your, your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish. Who does that remind you of? Christ. A male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day and the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take a blood, they shall take the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the house wherein they shall eat. And the reason for this is when the death angel sees the blood, then he would pass over the home. And this is just a, a wonderful analogy for us who serve God, even in this day and time. If we do things God's way, there are so many protections that God has that he protects us from. Here are the instructions. And they shall eat the flesh in the night, 
roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, and they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden, or cooked at all with water, boiling water, but roast with fire, and his head with his head and his legs and with the, the inner organs. They, the, the name that they use here is Puritans thereof. And you, you are in it to win it. This is my phrase. You're in it to win it. No easy and tasty moment. Your heart has to be to be in it. Now, there's times when God asked us to do things that really is yucky. And in this situation, you know, you really got to ask yourself, could you follow through God's instructions and be able to go forward and do these things? Because in, in most people's uh, uh, category, this is just not right. You're going to roast a lamb. You're going to roast him with his head, with his legs on, with all of his inward, uh, inwardness still inside of him. And I'm sure there was people that, rebelled and said I ain't doing it I'm not doing it but if we want God's blessing we have to obey him and he goes on to say and ye shall not let nothing of it remain unto the morning and that which remaineth or it until the morning ye shall burn with fire no evidence and thus shall ye eat with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Now, when we're looking at, at this verse, and he's talking about uh, having your, your loins girded, which is your clothes, girded about you, your shoes on, that is an indication of your faith level. You're going somewhere. You're preparing yourself mentally. You're preparing yourself physically. You're preparing yourself spiritually because you're going somewhere. And, and this is giving a clear example of faith. So, your mind and your heart believing in the Lord, could you live in those days and obey God to the fullest? Could you? You know, I often have said to myself, and, and, and I, I still, I'll still believe this, I still stand by it. I believe everybody is born at a certain time in a certain place to do uh, God's will. I believe it. Because I believe myself, if I was born back then and I had to go through this, man, I would, I would run the other way and say, let the Egyptians get me because I'm not going through this. This is just crazy. But God knows who we are, what we can, can, can comprehend, and what we can handle. And he places us in, in earthly bodies. He places us in the time frame that we need to be in that we can perform. Everyone say perform. And he says, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beasts, and again all the gods. That's a small G-O-D-S. That was their gods that they worshipped. Of the gods of, the, of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And in the, and in the manuscripts it talks about uh, God being uh, Yahweh. Yahweh was his correct name, Yahweh. And, and this was the God that was revealed to Moses. Verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Verse 14, and this day shall ye shall be unto you for a memorial. It's a memorial to remember this. It should be seared in your heart. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. 
Now, when you look at this and read this, you can see that it is a responsibility to tell your children, your siblings about the Lord and pass it down so that they don't forget it and they remember how we got out of Egypt. And that they remember that this is a real God that we serve. And get this, it's all the nations around the world, all the nations heard about what had happened. And so they knew that this true God, Yahweh, the God that was revealed to Moses, exists. I mean, we're not even going to even step in to the realm of when uh, the sea parted and went up because there was no way they could get on the other side unless the sea parted and rose up. So it was impossible not to believe in the true and the living God. Verse 15, seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. And, it, and, and this is a com, uh, instructions that they had to do. And unleavened bread, it had no yeast in it. I'm, I'm sure it, it tasted horrible. Even the first day ye shall put away leavened out of your house for whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day unto the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. In other words, left behind. And because God is a fierce, he's a true God, and he wants us to follow him. Now, when we look at leavening, what was the issue about leavening? Leavening, unleavened bread. Well, you don't want yeast in it because yeast represents sin. Sin rises up, puffs up, ready to go do something. Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take care of this. And God was teaching them unleavened bread, nothing rising up, nothing getting you, uh, uh, pushing you to go forward. It's going to be from your heart. You're going to go because I ask you, you've received me in your heart. And that's the reason that you're going. And in the first day, verse 16, there shall be a, an holy convocation and 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 in the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation and what is that that's a large gathering a large assembly to you no matter of works shall be done in them save that which every man must eat that only may be done of you everyone say this was the law Everyone say, not the grace we are living in today. The law was passed down to follow. Today we live in grace. What is grace? Freedom of choice. Only through Jesus Christ. We get to choose whether we want to follow God. We get to choose if we're going to read the word, if we're going to study. We get to choose how much we're going to study, how much we're going to read, how much we're going to retain. But back then, when the law was pronounced, you did it. And I know what some of you are thinking right now. Most of the time, or I'll say half the time, It was obeyed because they knew death awaited them. It wasn't obeyed because it was in the heart. I better do this or else. That's the difference between the law and grace. Now you get to have Jesus Christ, his spirit. You can just, let's just sum it up. The Trinity. You get to have him all inside of you. You get to love on him as he loves on you, and you get to say, I want to be a part of you as you want to be a part of me. And as we all make that choice, we make a choice to walk with him on our own cognizance. He's not forcing us to do it, but he is giving us a chance to serve him from our heart. See, the thing that a lot of people don't understand is the, the only thing God wants from us is he wants us to love him. 
I didn't say follow him. I didn't say pretend to know him. I didn't say convince people that you know him. He wants you to love him. How many of you take time out and say, I love you. I love you. On one hand. Oh, okay. Now everybody's getting, everybody wants a shot of this, huh? <laughs> But he wants to be loved. You know, a lot, of, a lot of the perceptions is that give him a sacrificial offering. In this day and time, it would be money and a little bit of time, but not, not commitment. You are going the extra mile when you say, take time out every day and say, I love you. I love you. I appreciate you, Lord, for everything that you do for me, known and unknown. Because there's a lot he does that we're not even going to know until we stay face to face with him. And in my mind, this is my mind, he throws the switch in the video, this is your life, plays. Because we're all going to look around and go, ooh, I didn't know that was about to happen to me. And, and he has delivered us out of that situation. Verse 17, and ye shall observe the feast of the unleavened bread, for in this self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt, the companies. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generation by an ordinance forever. He's reminding them, you're going to absorb this. This is going to be a memorial. You're never going to forget this. You need to teach this to your children that each generation will remember what has happened. Because it's recorded in history. In the first month on the 14th day of the month at even ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. Boy, this is a commandment. This is the law that he pushes, uh, uh, pushes down upon the Israelites. Verse 19, seven days shall there be no leavened found in your houses. No leavened, no yeast. For whosoever eateth, that which is leavened, and again, as I said earlier, yeast represents sin puffed up. Even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Verse 20. Ye shall eat nothing leavened in all your habitations, Shall ye eat unleavened bread? And, and what was he talking about here? He's talking about the places that you go. Now, you know that once they got over, uh, crossed over the sea, um, the Red Sea, that, you know, God had to get them to the promised land. And so they moved around quite a bit, quite a bit. And still, this was a law that was put in place that they needed to follow. Verse 21, then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, these are the leaders, draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop. What is hyssop? It's known as antiseptic. And dip it in the blood that is sin, I'm sorry, that is in the basin and strike the lentils and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin and none of you shall go out of the door of his house unto morning and this is God speaking to uh, Moses and he's giving it as he's being told what to give so as you look at Exodus it's reading uh, the the uh, words from God and and some of it sometimes sounds redundant, but nevertheless it's from God to Moses to us. Verse twenty three: For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when the when he seeks the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer, destroyer to come in unto the house to smite you. 
Protection is the most important thing for you and I in this life that we live. Protection was important for them. Protection is important for us that we wholly follow the Lord. When I say holy, I don't mean try to be perfect and do this or not. But our goal is to follow him with as little distractions as possible. <coughs> Excuse me. And it says here, And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever and ever. And this is a remembrance, a remembrance. You just hear this being repeated over and over again about tell your, your siblings, your children, the generations. You hear that. That's why it's so important as a parent to bring the children to, to Sunday school, teach them, bring the, the children to church, and even teach them at home that they may know the Lord. And if they decide to go the other direction, the Bible says it won't depart from them. And this is what God's goal was through Moses and Moses through the Israelites and to us. And it shall come to pass when ye become to the land, when you get to the land which the Lord will give you according to he had promised, that ye shall keep his service. In other words, don't forget how you got here. A lot of us forget how we got saved, how we found the Lord. We forget. Things start getting good. Oh, my grace, I'm being blessed. I got this. I got that. There's no need to pray anymore. We're good. And we slowly slip away from the wisdom, the knowledge of God. And you heard me say that it won't depart from you yet. It won't depart from you. But on the other hand, you won't be valuing it. Verse 27 that ye shall say it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt. And when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our house, and the people bowed the head and worshipped. And it's amazing at times when when we begin to get a blessing upon our lives on how we can be driven to bow and worship God. But God wants us to worship him without seeing any physical activity of him moving in our lives. And then it becomes a greater rejoicing time when, when the blessings fall. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. You hear that? The Israelites went away and they did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron Today, I'm going to end on this saying. Today, and this is my saying, I'm putting everything together for this particular portion of the sermon. Today, Christ is our Passover for the world today. I want you to say that with me. Today, Jesus Christ is our Passover for the world today. Now what this does, this eliminates animal sacrifice. No more, no more, no more. Which ushered in grace. Because he was the final sacrifice. Died on the cross of Calvary for us. For the whole world. And even those that have died before us. Those of us that have received him as Lord and Savior have a covenant with the Father through Jesus Christ. No more sacrifices. Anyone that tries to commit sacrifices, it's an abomination to God. <laughs> no more sacrifices needed. We can approach the throne of grace asking the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. By now, God the Father would have had to destroy, as I said earlier, all mankind if Jesus hadn't volunteered his earthly life. And you may ask, 
what possibly could have happened if Jesus Christ didn't come to the cross of Calvary. We would be in a mess. We would be in a mess. It would still be fights about the word, about the law. There would be no grace. But he loved us so much that he knew that we would be sacrificing animal sacrifices for the rest of our lives. And when we were done sacrificing it, we would go out and commit the same sin over again. And as you read in the Old Testament, it was a, a yearly thing, sometimes twice a year, that, or, or, or more two or three times a year, where they had to go up to, it was called Shiloh. Go up, bring a sacrifice, let the priest offer it up to God for your sins. And that's what we would still be doing right now. Be coming in with a, a dove or lamb, whatever you could afford. And we would be bringing them and asking the priest to bless that and ask God for forgiveness in our behalf. But as we go on next week, we're going to go into what the Lamb of God has done for us and the privileges we have through God's Passover versus the animal sacrifice Passover. Amen. Father, today we just love you and we honor you, Lord, because you're always there for us. You're always looking uh, to help us, teach us, and give us the grace that we need and the forgiveness as we approach your throne of grace and ask for it. And we just ask you to allow wisdom to fall upon all of us as we have listened to this sermon and just allow us to research it out and just see how it applies and just bless us that we will become more knowledgeable in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for joining us on the pastor.com YouTube channel. We encourage you to continue to have a conversation with God on a daily basis. Not many people take the time out of their schedule to do so. Again, this ministry encourages everyone of, um, of importance to receive Jesus Christ into their life as Lord and Savior. You may ask, how do I receive him? Just talk to him, confessing to him as being a sinner and realizing how much you need him and ask Jesus into your heart, which is your mind. And in doing so, we have an advocate with the Father, that when we repent and ask for forgiveness for any of our sins that we all commit regularly, God is justified to forgive us of our sins. One of the most challenging moments that we all will face is accepting his forgiveness and receiving it. But let me tell you, practice makes perfect. We may not feel comfortable the first time around, but as we keep receiving him and his forgiveness, it, it'd be like um, nature. And knowing that someone loves you as deeply as God Almighty. He himself has proven that by bringing his only begotten son into the world to die on the cross of Calvary, to absorb all of the sins that we all have committed and yet have the power to forgive us. So keep that in mind. We love you and we look forward to having you join us doing our next lecture. God bless you. Till next time. Soon as I stopped worrying Worrying how the story ain't I let go and I let God I let God have his way That's when things start happening When I stop looking at back then When I let go and I let God I let God have his way mm -hmm. I couldn't seem to fall asleep There was so much on my mind 
searching for that peace But the peace I could not find Oh, but then I, I kneeled down to pray I was praying, help me please Then he said you don't have to cry I'll supply all your needs Soon as I stop worrying oh. Worrying how the story is oh. When I let go and I let go Let go and be free That's when things start happening oh. Let go. Oh, let go. Let go. And just let God. Let go. Oh. 